Hi everyone. In this presentation, I will talk how to play with light. And specifically, we will play with light in thin film organic materials from nanoscale to smart windows. To have an overview on um, uh, solar cells, I normally use uh, this slide to show um, the variety of different uh, solar cell technologies that are available now um, in science and also on the market. And to divide them uh, by uh, efficiency and um, typology of um, technology, I, um, I like very much to uh, schematize um, a group these uh, technologies in three macro groups. Uh, the top part, um, that uh, the round shape has um, a purple and blue color, identify all the um, solar cells that are um, high performance but are used in um, basically in space application or combined with um, um, solar concentrator. In the um, central part of the graph you can see that um, with the blue and greenish color there are the rooftop application solar cell that is mainly represented by silicon technology. While I, um, I prefer to group all the new emerging solar cell in a um, so-called uh, new application scenario where the efficiency is still not so high but um, their new way of producing them and the um, different uh, characteristics that they have um, they might be applied to different um, fields than uh, the established solar cell uh, technologies. And um, one um, of the main uh, advantages of this um, new uh, solar cell are basically um, the aerial cost. So the solar cells are cheaper in, um, compared to the um, established one when you produce them and have like a, a big uh, area. Also, the way you produce them, um, the energy that you spend for fabrication is much less because the temperature you use in the process, they are much lower. Um, and then uh, I should also highlight that most of the new technologies, they weight much less than the silicon solar cell or the oil um, technologies in general. And of course, by weighting less, uh, they are easy to um, install and the material consumption, the material that we use to make them, is much less. Um, this new, um, in, in this group of new um, solar cell technologies, we have uh, thin film organic photovoltaics. Organic photovoltaics can be applied uh, for transparency, uh, build integrated photovoltaics, like the um, picture on top on the left or um, they can also apply with lightweight um, consumer electronics, for example, on a backpack. And they can be flexible and uh, further they can be um, roll to roll manufactured. And that means that the cost of production will be, um, it is actually um, much lower than uh, um, other kind of um, production. Uh, indeed, uh, roll to roll is the same technology that they use for newspapers, and so you can imagine how um, cheap could be uh, producing a solar cell with this kind of technology. From an optical point of view, from the point of view of light, there are um, small issues uh, regarding uh, thin films in general, and these issues are regard to absorption efficiency. So you have to absorb um, the full uh, solar spectrum in a very thin layer of material. And um, a second issue is represented by the spectral range. That means that you want to absorb all the colors of the sun, all the spectrum, and not only uh, a part of it. Uh, the third issue is more combined when you use uh, organic photovoltaics when, uh, um, when they are transparent and you want to do an application on a window. And um, indeed, uh, there are some light tests to pass through and there should be a um, trade-off between transparency and efficiency of the solar cell itself. So we're going to um, address all these issues in the following slides. 
if you um, generalize um, how the light behaves um, when encounters a thin film uh, layer in general, just a layer of material that is about 100 to 100 nanometers thick, we can see that the blue part of the radiation is um, kind of stuck at the beginning of the layer, while the green it can be uh, absorbed and can be um, efficiently absorbed in the thin film layer, while the red part that has um, a longer wavelength pass through the, the thin film solar cell without being uh, significantly uh, absorbed. And if you, can, if you see um, the solar spectrum in the bottom of the, um, of the graph, you can realize that the number of photons are um, much higher in the green and red part of the spectrum. So it's the, the right part of the, um, of the graph. And so we have to focus a lot in um, um, improve the red absorption in, um, in thin film solar cells. From this um, small introduction, we can now play with light. And we will do it in um, three different steps. The first step is um, at the nanoscale. We are going to use an optical antenna to trap the light in uh, organic photovoltaics. A second part of my presentation will regard um, an optical cavity that can trap the light inside the thin film solar cell and can boost uh, transparent organic photovoltaics. The last part of my talk will be more applied and um, we're going to use a print and transistor for standalone sun windows. That means that at uh, this stage we are able to print um, all the circuitry that we need for uh, uh, smart windows in the same way that we do for uh, newspapers. So, starting from optical antennas, if uh, you know a little bit about uh, plasmonic and antennas, you can um, um, kind of imagine that a um, plasmonic nanoparticle is used to enhance the light inside the active layer. And that if you have just one nanoparticle is going to um, scatter the light um, efficiently uh, depending on the wavelength while if you have two of them you're going to have much more scattering and that's where we start from our um, research uh, work and uh, if you think further and we know that the red um, part of the solar radiation as a longer wavelength, that means that a small nanoparticle will not strongly interact with the, the red radiation. While if you combine two nanoparticles, we might have more chance to indeed scatter the light and have a higher absorption in act active material of the solar cell. So this is um, mostly um, intuition talk. And um, after that, we start to do some simulation First of all, we used the um, MIE theory and uh, we analyzed the scattering cross-section of uh, monomer and dimers of um, gold nanoparticles. And we did see that um, monomer, so single nanoparticles, um, react mostly in the green part uh, between uh, 500 and uh, 650 nanometers, while a dimer uh, can scatter efficiently the light um, up to 800 nanometers, so it covers also the red part of the solar spectrum. And if we combine the meteor simulation with the finite element method, we can see that the electric field distribution inside the solar cell is uh, very uh, enhanced in the active layer area where the nanoparticles are just above of it. To fabricate this kind of um, uh, combined uh, nanoparticles, we use um, a DTT linker. This linker um, enables to have structure with two or three or more nanoparticles coupled 
by leaving a nano gap in between the nanoparticles. And this is fundamental for the optical characteristic of these kind of antennas. And we can selectively um, choose which kind of structure we want thanks to electrophoretic um, screening of the nanoparticle itself. So once we have the nanoparticle and the nano antennas, we can um, uh, easily uh, implement them in a solar cell structure. And we did that by spin coat uh, the solar cell on top of the ITO um, layer. And um, after that, we um, deposit our solar cell uh, again with spin coating in air um, process. And after after that, uh, we analyze the solar cell characteristics. As you can see in the graph, we don't have electrical losses. But if depending on which kind of antennas, which kind of nanoparticles we use, there is a different enhancement in efficiency. And if we use just a single nanoparticle, we see that the efficiency goes from 2.8 um, up to 3%. While uh, if we introduce this dimer, this um, solar cell, in this solar cell, the efficiency goes up to 3.2% of efficiency. Moreover, we, if we analyze further uh, this behavior, we see that the enhancement is mostly in the red part of the spectrum. And uh, if you see the difference in between the single nanoparticles um, antennas and the oligomers um, external quantum efficiency, you see that indeed we have a, a small peak at 450 nanometers and one at 650 nanometers. And here the difference is a percentage difference. So the zero line corresponds to the single nanoparticle source cell. If we compare this graph with the different in per in percentage of the um, uh, scattering efficiency of these two different nanoantennas, uh, we can see that the behavior it covers um, pretty um, uh, nicely the external quantum efficiency. And indeed, if you uh, see the little graph in, uh, in between, the light at 650 nanometers it's strongly um, scattered by the dimer, while for a monomer, for a single nanoparticles, you don't observe that. Now we can conclude this first part of optical antennas, um, saying that the current enhancement in the red part of the spectrum is due to the presence of the dimers. We can see that the vertical incident red light scattered efficiently inside the thin layer active material. And this is realized in a compact design suitable for thin photovoltaics. All of the process in this um, uh, first part was self-assembled and made at low temperature. That means that the fabrication um, at, is at maximum 115 um, degrees Celsius. And the most important conclusion in this part regarding optical antennas is that the external quantum efficiency improvement is in good agreement with the scattering wavelength dependence of the nanoparticles. Now we move to the second part of the presentation where we talk about optical cavity. It's a way that this optical cavity is a way to boost transparent organic photovoltaics. So we want to um, apply our knowledge in play with light to transparent uh, building integrated photovoltaics. And this is one of the main um, added functionalities in thin film or, um, organic photovoltaics. If, you, um, if we schematize a transparent solar facade of a building, for example, uh, we can separate uh, the um, out, outside um, environment to the building environment and from the outside we have a solar uh, radiation that encounters first the um, photovoltaic cell and then the glass of the window and at the end we have some light that passes through this system and enters the building.
You can imagine here that the efficiency of the solar cell has to be lower in order to allow some light to go through um, the building. And indeed, if you compare the external quantum efficiency of an opaque solar cell against a transparent solar cell, you can see that the efficiency is higher for all the wavelength in which the active material absorbs. Now, we would like to design something that can um, still keep the transparency of the solar cell, but reach the performance of an opaque one. And we do that by mounting um, the electric multilayer on top and below the solar cell. On top is because we want as much as light going through the device. And below is because we want to uh, capture some light and keep it in the active material region. And we combine this dielectric multilayer with two uh, semi transparent metal electrodes. In this way, we can also use the optical uh, cavity of these uh, two metal electrodes to trap um, in a more um, defined way the light. And now um, by building and designing this structure, we want, com want to compare this structure with uh, a transparent solar cell that only has the um, two the electric layer on top that they, they can be called like an, a transparent solar cell with an anti-refraction coating STC2 and uh, with an opaque solar cell that is um, a non-transparent solar cell with the, again an anti-refraction coating on top of it. And if we compare these three structures, the STC1, that is the transparent solar cell, the opaque, and the STC2, that is the transparent solar cell with our design, we can see that the efficiency from the uh, standard uh, transparent solar cell is about half of the opaque one. But that our design solar cell, our transparent solar cell, can um, almost um, uh, reach the same level of the opaque one. And indeed, the, the efficiency of the um, solar cell, um, of the opaque solar cell, is 5.9, while our design solar cell has 5.3 of efficiency. And um, furthermore, if we look at the current, we see that we almost reach the same current level of the opaque solar cell. So the, um, our design solar cell has 10.3, 7 um, milliamp for centimeter square, uh, while the opaque one is 11.1. But now we would like to see where um, the solar cell absorbs more compared to the solar spectrum. And if we see uh, both the, um, the simulation and experimental data, we can um, clearly understand why our structure can almost reach um, the performance of the opaque one. Indeed, um, from um, wavelengths up to um, 470, uh, the behavior is similar. But uh, we lose a little bit if you compare the, the green and the black curve. We are losing a little bit of efficiency in the visible range that means uh, between um, 470 and uh, 650. But uh, the most important point is that when we compare the green and the black line, the green is our design and the black line is again the, the opaque solar cell, we see that at 720 nanometers we outperform the opaque solar cell. That means that we absorb much more um, red uh, light and uh, it's not a red light that you can see, but it's uh, just um, outside of our uh, uh, visible spectrum. So this uh, peak of absorption was designed by us and uh, basically is an influence on the transparency of the solar cell. And now um, we can see um, in detail uh, how the light uh, behaves inside the device. And again, indeed, you see that um, the, um, our designs, transparent solar cell and the opaque standard uh, solar cell, 
behave similarly and that um, the transparent uh, STC1 uh, can uh, absorb, uh, uh, you can see clearly the peak at 720 nanometers. And indeed, if you compare the electromagnetic field inside the active layer and uh, you uh, calculate the relative change between uh, the uh, opaque solar cell and the um, enhanced transparent solar cell, the one that we designed, you can observe this uh, red peak around 700 nanometers. Now, um, we, we want to compare, of course, the transparency. It's one of the most, most important points in a transparent solar cell. And we want to see that um, the standard uh, transparent solar cell has a, a transparency or lumi luminosity that is uh, pretty close to the one that we designed. And indeed, you, you can observe that um, at the end of the day, the STC1 has a 21% of uh, transparency, while the, uh, the original transparent solar cell has 23%. So we didn't lose um, much transparency, but we gained almost double in efficiency. Concluding this part about optical cavities, we have demonstrated that it's possible to design and fabricate an external optical cavity. And uh, we have avoided the loss in photon harvesting um, exhibited by the majority of the semi-transparent uh, solar cell. We reached a 21% of visible transparency that correspond to the 96.4% in current compared to the opaque solar cell. We used And we did that with a minimum consumption of material. Uh, we can also um, stress the point and, uh, about the versatility of the, the multi-layer design. It's a suitable balance between performance and visible transparency. A good point of having an external optical cavity is that no degradation in the electrical uh, uh, characteristic of the device was observed. Now we have arrived to the last part of this presentation where I'm going to talk about printed transistor for standalone sun windows. And we want to combine all the um, added functionalities of uh, thin film organic photovoltaics by the means of transparency, lightweight, flexible and roll to roll processing and combine them for um, a particular application. So it's a window application but this time we would like to modulate the color of the window because, um, for example, we, we have a sun window, we have a house with a lot of windows or with big windows, or when we have a, a greenhouse, we need to um, take care of temperature and light uh, during the day. And uh, we would like also to uh, have some privacy or block some light pollution from outside during the night. So we have approached this problem by looking at the um, uh, current uh, market uh, solution or um, very close to market solution of uh, printed electronics. And in all the pictures that I encountered online and all the things I read is that screens or solar cell, they can be printed. But one thing that is common of all of these three pictures is that all of them need a box and the box contains the electronics that um, is needed for functioning uh, this kind of devices. So we decided to um, realize a high current uh, transistor and realize it by printing it. And uh, we designed our roll-to-roll um, -roll transistor and we decided to use uh, ambient, ambient air conditions um, work in room temperature and uh, using maximum annealing of 130 degrees because indeed we are using a plastic foil that cannot be processed at um, temperature that are above 150 degrees. Once we designed 
and this, um, in this case, on the left side of the screen, we um, elaborated um, a design for our electrodes. And after that, we uh, put them on work on a machine. And uh, indeed, um, we roll to roll um, printed our electrodes. And to show you how fast is um, the process, I have this video and you can basically see um, a speed that is up to 20 meters per a minute and, um, the all, and you can see all different steps of this um, printing and uh, most important is the flexo printed uh, that imprint the um, uh, pattern of the electrodes and also the um, uh, as you can see the flashlight is the photonic sintering machine that can cure uh, very fastly our ink to have a um, uh, very conductive uh, silver electrode at the end. And this is the result. It's a um, long roll of plastic with uh, some silver electrode on top. And uh, very nicely uh, we observed that the um, resolution of such a print is up to 50 micron and um, the pattern is uh, very well defined. And um, this is uh, indeed the optical image of the printed source and drain fingers of our electrodes. And from this point we decide to realize the transistor uh, by uh, adding a first layer with a slow die coating machine of uh, P3HT and then a second layer of uh, PVP, that's a dielectric, to isolate the um, semiconductor material uh, with the um, uh, top gate electrode. And indeed the last step was to screen print uh, the electrode on top of the device. If we now analyze the characteristic and the thermal mapping of such um, uh, transistor, we can see that there is a strong de dependence on the temperature. And um, indeed, um, the current is um, optimal when um, it's between 25 degrees and under 20 degrees. And it's the same uh, with the characteristic of the device. And indeed, if you take the 80 degrees sample, uh, the um, image C and D, and you measure the, the variation in temperature when um, there is uh, the maximum current passing through that it's about 45 milliamp. Um, you can see that in figure E you have a, a, non, a very strong uh, thermal response while if you are in the um, low regime where the current is almost zero the temperature is around 80 degrees. And now we want to combine this um, transistor of it um, device with uh, our organic solar cell it, and with um, an electrochromic window, organic electrochromic window. And we studied this uh, small circuit where um, the power is supplied by an OPV. The gate is also operated by an OPV solar cell and the current is used by an electrochromic um, device. So we combine physically these um, four devices and we indeed um, see that the transistor characteristic can um, selectively um, choose a um, characteristic curve based on voltage applied but also um, temperature applied or ambient temperature depending on the case and if you follow the yellow line or the um, purple line you can see that you can switch off the circuit by simply uh, changing the temperature between um, 40 degrees to 60 degrees and this is very helpful when we want to um, have a dark window when um, there is uh, sunshine and this is very useful also because we have the same system to have 
dark windows when uh, it's uh, night time, when you want some privacy or when you want um, that the light from outside doesn't come in. As a further step, we can think about all the electrical requirements of this system and um, if we idealized all the devices, we can see that a square meter of electrocomic window only needs a few centimeters of stripe of organic solar cell and um, transistors, organic transistor, to functioning. And this is because an electrocomic window needs a very, um, very low um, current and has a very low uh, power consumption. And concluding on this part, we have shown that um, printing a high current transistor is possible with the roll-to-roll -roll technique and that we realized a um, demo device for um, uh, demonstrating uh, the efficiency of this um, organic transistor combined with an organic uh, solar cell and an organic electrochromic window and we did all the processing by flexo printing um, and uh, by using slot die coating for the um, organic material and script printing for the gate electrode. So we arrived to the end of this video about playing with light and um, I'm sure if somebody of you is interested in the topic that uh, I've been talking in this um, presentation you can um, check the DOI number and um, retrieve the data and the documents online uh, regarding all of the three topics, the optical antennas, the optical cavity and the printed transistor. And with that I want to thank you uh, for um, seeing my video and I also would like to thank all my collaborators that make these things possible in the last uh, few years.